Do you remember the saying, speaking from the dead? Well, Kim Porter is literally speaking. She was speaking while she was alive, but now she's speaking from the dead. I want you to take a listen to Tez Moses. Job well done narrating. It's not illy formed, as my mother and grandmother used to say. It's not annoying. The, your voice, that is. It is clear cut. And I like it. I want you to go to Tez Moses channel. Her channel is spelled T like time, E Z Z M O S I S. And the title is Kim Porter's Explosive Tell All Book Kim's Lost Words. If you haven't seen this already, I implore you to go, honey, for free. For free, for free. Go take a look and a listen. It's a little over an hour long, but it is so much worth it. I stop it and start it, stop it and start it. Um, you know, while I'm cooking the children's dinner, while I'm washing clothes, whatever I'm doing, I'm sorry about my finger. Whatever I'm doing, I'm stop and start, stop and start. So let's take a listen and honey, did this man, and I'm sorry to say this, uh, Quincy, but he's touching butts again. All right, let's, let's take, hey, looking to listen. You'll be glad you did. Here we go. Again, shout out to. Moses. Sean gave him a little love tap on the butt. It's bedtime, Quincy replied. Okay, good night, as he turned to head towards his bedroom. Here was the man I fell in love with. But what was I thinking? Shit, not only does he want butt plugs, he slapped the shit out of me. So why am I still talking to him? They say that love is blind, but is it stupid, too? As Quincy left, Sean looked at me and smiled. Baby, let's go have some fun. The babysitter's on the way. I just want to show you a good time. I was so mad at myself for melting as I said, okay. We sat on the couch laughing and genuinely having a good time when the doorbell rang. The babysitter had arrived, and so we left. As we exited the house, a big man climbed out of the limo and opened the door for us. He wore a sharp suit with a gun noticeably tucked under his arm. I thought to myself, Jean. he could have made it invisible, or did he want me to see it? Despite my reservations, Gene was a sweetheart. He was very courteous and polite. As he tipped his head and said, good evening, ma'am. Gene drew a smile out of me as I responded, hello. Gene and I would see each other a lot after this day. Chapter five, Sean kneels. The year passed and thankfully we didn't have many bad arguments. Although Sean was strangely getting into voodoo, he'd put curses on people and I wasn't sure how to- Let's hear that again. Demonic, toxic, narcissistic people indulge greatly into voodoo. Five, Sean kneels. The year passed, and thankfully we didn't have many bad arguments. Although Sean was strangely getting into voodoo, he'd put curses on people, and I wasn't sure how to respond to that craziness. My problem as a single mother was, I wanted to be married. He always had excuses and delays when it came to committing to marriage. His label was blowing up, Biggie dropped, and it was just about over. He also signed Mary J. Blige. And of course, when I found out he slept with her, we fought. He claimed it was a mistake, and my stupid ass took him back, again. Sean asked me for a threesome with her. At first I was mad, but Mary was beautiful. It was our first threesome and I loved it. Mary was sexy. I would not be doing this a lot, but it was so hot. I was young and exploring my sexuality was enticing. Over the years, we brought other women into our bedroom periodically and we were happy. That is until one day it came home to a situation that went from awkward to a nightmare. Quincy was with the babysitter and Sean was sitting with Al B. Sure at the dinner table. I had a child with Al and Sean was the father in Quincy's life. The awkwardness of all of us being together had dissolved a long time ago, but it was still weird that they were here, in my home, together, alone. 
I sat down. We had drinks. It was fun. The conversation was cool. Until it wasn't. Al was a little loose after a couple of drinks. I remember him saying, It's still weird seeing you with my friend. But you're happy, so I'm happy for you guys. Sean responded, Thanks, man. Me and you, we shared so much. Al replied coolly, Word. The conversation took an odd and awkward turn when Sean said, We all been together sexually, but not together. I was shocked for a moment. As quietness lingered in the room, I asked, What do you mean by all together? Al shifted uncomfortably. But Sean didn't hesitate. You know how we sometimes invite other people into our bed? I couldn't believe it. Oh, hell no, Sean. This is my son's father. Al, say something. What Al said was mind-boggling. I don't know. It could be kind of hot. I miss you in that way. Although I couldn't believe Sean would do this, the truth was, I still cared about Al. And this could be very hot. I just didn't want it messing up my relationship. And if things became awkward, how it would affect Quincy. So I asked, are you both sure? Imagine both of them inside me. I knew this would be awkward sexually. There'd be some bumping of genitals. But what happened next? I couldn't have imagined in my wildest dreams. Al, blank, 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 blank. I couldn't believe it. I stood there in shock. But when Sean, blank, 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 I ran out of the room. This was too much. I couldn't. Sean called out to me. Oh, come on, Kimmy. They didn't chase after me. They blank, blank, blank. I couldn't get the image out of my mind. I couldn't wow. Sean but that wouldn't be the last time I saw Sean in a compromising position. Not by a long shot. One day I found the vault where he kept all of his encounters with men. Yes, he kept record of it. But that's for later. Chapter 6. Hawk. Biggie took over for East Coast Hip Hop. And Sean was the brilliant mind that orchestrated it. He hired people to teach Chris how to flow and write his lyrics. He hired the best producers to do the beats. Although he took credit for them. And the music was unstoppable. At this I want you guys to listen to what she says next. Listen to what she says next about the proposition, the free proposition that Sean, Puffy, Pissy, Dookie Combs. Just a proposition to Tupac. And Tupac says, no, no, and a no. Listen to this. You are not going to believe it. Listen. Point, Sean was sleeping with all the power players and everyone that wanted to do music wanted to be a bad boy. Sean wheeled a deal in a way that would have been unthinkable to many. He slept with the guys that really controlled the music to stay on top. A lot of the names average people have never heard of. These are the guys that make the decisions on who is winning and who is not. He hosted parties that were just a fancy name for orgies, and everyone wanted in. When I met Tupac, Sean and I had an open relationship. And yes, I slept with Pac. Shit, he was sexy. Sean didn't mind. Well, not until he tried to get Pac to join both of us. <gasps> Pac was not good with that. This is where the relationship between them became strained. Tupac wasn't going to accept Sean's advances. Pac wasn't gay, and he was pissed about the advances. We were all in Sean's house. I was drinking, they were smoking, and everyone was just relaxing. Sean came in on what I'm sure he would call a smooth approach. My baby is bad, isn't she? Pop threw me a sly smile. Hell yeah. I felt myself blush. Sean was now in full swing. You think you hit it better than me? I couldn't believe he disrespected me that way. I was not playing with my response. Sean, what the fuck? Pop came to my defense. Damn, bro, you ain't gonna do the sister that way. Tupac appeared upset behind Sean's words. But Sean went in for the kill, regardless. I think my dick's bigger than yours. I bet it can make her come faster than you. What's up? Pac was appalled. The fuck are you talking about? I ain't trying to run no fucking train. Sean continued. What you scared of? Let's see who fucks better. Let her be the judge. Yes, at this point, we'd been inviting others into our bed for a while. But I'm not used to, and will not stand for disrespect. I wasn't the only one upset. Pac shouted. You talking about pulling your fucking dick out? Sean was undaunted. What, you scared? Tupac simply left. Things were contentious since then. The two could not be in the same room. Pac avoided me as much as he did Sean. When they did bump into each other, the tension was palpable. It felt like blows could be thrown at any moment. Months passed with only the tension between them. It was uncomfortable, but nothing life or death. Then one day while we were at the studio, it happened. I walked into Sean's office and he was having the conversation. 
Sean sat across from Jimmy Henchman. Talk don't leave that fucking studio alive. I don't think I was supposed <gasps> to do that. I continued as if I didn't. Ooh. Hey, Sean. Good morning, Jimmy. They didn't seem to think I heard anything. Mortaring breakfast. Smiling, Sean replied first. Let me get eggs, sunny side up, with grits, and an orange juice. I could see he was hung over. Good. I don't want him knowing I know anything. If he had just put a hit out on Pac, knowing something could be dangerous. Jimmy, apparently not hungry, said, nothing for me. As he stood to exit the room, he said to Sean, let's make that happen. Then nodded to me and said, Kim, always a pleasure. With a wink to me and a nod to Sean, he turned and walked out. Jimmy was part of our intimate circle. It went on as if nothing was happening. I'll make the call now. I smiled as I left, hoping I wasn't white as a sheet. I wasn't in the studio the night Pac survived being shot. Thank God. From what I understand, Sean and Chris saw Pac at the studio after he'd been shot and did nothing. The way God works. After being shot, Pac made it to the elevator and tried to escape. But it stopped at the floor Sean and Chris were on. When the doors opened, they saw him lying on the elevator floor, riddled with bullets. The fact that they didn't call an ambulance, although they saw Pac lying there swimming in a pool of his own blood, would be all the evidence Pac ever needed. He, of course, assumed they placed the hit. And Tupac is a soldier. This is not something that will be unanswered. Tupac. Guys, you have to watch this. Shout out to Anipa. Let's share this with me. Listen. You have to watch this. Or should I say you have to listen to it? Because it well. shares more than you ever knew. Kim Porter lost words. Her lost words. Dream of a star. I. Something, something of light. Where I shall be born and is the depth of it. That sound Illuminati to me, but anyway. A journey for justice from the other side. Kim Porter, you must check this out. I love you.